Hey, Gandhi, joined with Best Man D Mac and Jason Smith. Actually, it's supposed to be Jason Brown, and his name is Lunchbox. How are you? <laughs> Doing well. It's good. The rest of you boys? Uh, oh, fantastic. I'm. Um, I'm I'm recovered. You look a lot better than than last episode. I like Zombie D Mac personally. I was a big I fan of him. Just sitting there like this. <laughs> Everybody thought I was on every type of drug. I was just sick, man. Relax, okay? <laughs> but I was dying, and I'm recovered. Well, that's good. I'm yep. to hear that. Well, I'm doing all right, except the uh, Steelers lost. Uh, oh no, it's a bad, bad week now. Huh? It <laughs> it's just ruined my whole week. Well, whatever. The yeah, Steelers, you know, uh, you know. Eh, shut up, you. <laughs> Washington fan. All right. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> this would be the Christmas edition, but uh, quite frankly, no one has Christmas stuff, and I have a Santa hat. This one, but it's not getting, it's not just not happening. So, with that said, um, let's welcome Lunchbox. Oh, Bravo and Nexi couldn't make the show. Uh, Nexi's never gonna make Wednesdays, but Bravo's supposed to. So, send him your hate mail. Uh, so, Lunchbox, how are you, my friend? Doing well. Been relaxing and taking it easy since since uh, last event. Now, what have you done with that hundred thousand dollars? I must know. Uh, well, I haven't got it yet, so I haven't done much with it. Mm. But, what did you, who uh, got the check? Uh, me and me and uh, Roy got the check. It's right behind me, actually. Really? Uh, I can't see it. Yeah, it's right oh, I, see it. I see you it. I see it. Oh, uh, wow. Wow, yeah. So we have to take that. We let Ola take uh, the trophy since he played like a god all of it. <clears throat> Fair enough. Now, um, now, they got the MVPs of the season. They got Pistola and Roy. Um, Bullshit. Some could argue that, that the MVPs could have been Ogre 2 and Lunchbox. Are, are you one of those Ooh. people that makes those arguments? Uh, you won't see me arguing that point. Uh, no? Uh, Pistola and, and my brother played amazing all season, and they deserve every bit of that MVP. Um, no, I would never argue that. <laughs> hmm. But, I mean, when some people looked at your game, <laughs> there was a point where a lot of people thought you were better than Roy. I'm one of those people. In fact, Roy is one of those people who thought for a second that you were better than him. I don't know if he thinks the same today, but... <laughs> For one minute, he did think you were better than him. Uh, did you, I, I think did you I play. Been... I think me and Tom play a very big part of our team. But uh, you know, Roy and Ola both are just incredibly dominant. And uh, I think me and Tom can be. But you know, we, I, you know, Roy and Justin just kind of, or Roy and Ola, just really take over games, and they do it on a consistent basis. And as you saw in Nationals, when both of them were playing well. Uh, you know, really good things happen for us because we are outplaying the other teams pretty much every game, and yeah, that helps a lot. So what? So what was it like to win a national championship? You've been in the running from the community saying you could win the past what three, four events. Well, we placed pretty much everything four except seasons? for first at a national. I placed first, second, third, fourth, and fifth through my five <laughs> nationals. Well, you didn't so. play six, seven, three. But, no, yeah. well, I did. Thank, thank God. <laughs> I don't want to be out of the top five of the Nationals. It's too big of a payday. Uh, no, yeah, it was. I mean, it was a great feeling. That's coming into the, the league. I in 2007, I never thought that I would be able to win a national championship. That's for damn sure. So, uh, you know, being able to put to you know, I, I put we put together some pretty good teams throughout the last three or four years, and uh, I feel like we've been in the running to do it. Uh, we got second in 2008, and uh, you know, the last two we've. We got third last year, which I felt like we had a team that could have possibly done it, uh, but FB was just too good. And uh, this year we finally got the team together that I, I honestly felt like going in as long as we, you know, played played well. I didn't even feel like we had to play our, our absolute best. As long as, you know, we played well. We were, we were coming off of a, our worst placing as a team the event before, but, uh, you know, really after that event, none of us were too disappointed. We didn't play well at all, and we, you know, still placed fifth. Um, and, you know, honestly, we lost a really close series to Dynasty. We lost in four games, but uh, two of the games we lost were incredibly close, and both of them were new maps, Oasis and Pit, which we really did not practice much at all uh, compared to the other teams that it showed. So we, we put a ton of time into that in between uh, that event and Nationals, and it showed at Nationals. Gotcha. So 
after Providence, you know, you have you, you, you're your national champion and you're on, you know, top. What have you been doing since then? Have you been playing a lot of Halo? I've have played a little bit Halo? of Halo. Well, I haven't played I haven't played as much as some people. Um mainly because there's not any real settings out right now and I don't really I've never been one to to play, you know, ten different settings and then give my opinion on, on which I would like to see because in the long run I really don't uh you know mind what we play. Uh you know, regardless I'm gonna practice whatever is decided. Um and at this point, you know, Halo's not for sure on the circuit, so I don't want to invest a lot of time and uh, uh, effort into, you know, getting good at Noblem and then have it not be on the circuit because, you know, that would be a heartbreaker for me. I, I'm really hoping it is, but I'm at the same time, I'm a little pessimistic about it because I don't want to get my hopes up. And, um, I, you know, I understand that we didn't have a good, se- uh, you know, good year last season, but I, th- I feel like a lot of that honestly was having Bloom in it. You know, it, the community lost a lot of faith in the game. And, you know, from there, obviously, the numbers probably went down and down. So I think as long, you know, without Bloom, uh, you know, it's going to feel like a lot of the other Halos. So I don't see why, uh, you know, it couldn't rebound. Sure. It also works out in your favor that you don't have to go through the team changes again. So you could take <laughs> yeah. a little time off and enjoy yourself. Yeah, exa- yeah exactly. We, I mean, uh, you know, I'm still playing and hanging out with, you know, Tom and Ola and, you know, every single day, pretty much. So, uh, you know, it's not like we're, you know, we have just haven't talked to each other and we're just not playing Halo. It's more so just, you know, after putting in so much time through the whole season and, you know, having it all pay off for the first time for me and, and me and my brother, I feel, I, I feel like especially, you know, we were ready for, you know, to take a, a much needed and, you know, to deserve break. Uh, now, what's good with Battlefield 3? Because uh, we played a lot. Ogre 2, he don't stop playing it. Uh, <laughs> what What's going on with Instinct Battlefield 3? I know you heard some bad news through the tournament that was running it. What's going on? Yeah, we've uh, pretty much right when we heard it was coming out. You know, we decided that we wanted to try and compete in it because it was supposed to be, uh, or it's still supposed to be at the beginning of 2012 sometime, so in the earlier months. Uh, which shouldn't conflict with MLG, assuming Halo's on the circuit. Uh, so I, we've been playing a ton. Illinois is actually announced as one of the states that you c- cannot compete in. Um, so, but, you know, we'll work around that. If, if I have to, I'll move to Ohio and get temporary residence there or something so that I compete in it. It's enough money to, uh, you know, figure out a way around it because, you know, I'd imagine the only reason that they would include the states they did is based on legalities. Uh, you know, so I'll, conf- you know, do whatever I have to to abide by those. and The gambling uh, wall, right? Yeah, the gambling walls is yeah. what I've heard. That's so bullshit. Yeah, it is. And, you Just know, saying. so, you know, wh- whatever I have to do, I'll, you know, I'll be able to compete in it. I'll move to, I'll move to Tom's house so, for a couple months. You're still definitely playing in that. Yeah, no, as of right now, uh, you know, we still 100% are playing to play. We're trying to get a uh, a squad together. We've already got... Quite a few guys were looking to team with, so... Uh, I, heard you, I heard you guys are selling out and going for uh, PC guys that are switching the console for... Well, we're getting a couple of... We're getting, <laughs> we're getting the best players we can find. Uh, no balls! And Where's your loyalty, Don, man? Don himself. Where's the camaraderie? <laughs> Yo, this clan, 40... That kid, Ebon. I used Emon. to play a little bit... Yo, Box, was I alright, though? Yeah. Yeah, no. I was alright, yeah. yeah was. I was... I couldn't hang with the team, but I was all right. You know. Yeah, Eggnog. Eggnog is our nickname for him. Emong is, is one of the guys we're playing a lot with. He's, uh, he's good. He's very good. So, uh, you know, we've been playing with a lot of different people, and our squad's not set at all right now. We've, we're still in, obviously, the beginning stages. We don't know if it's going to be a 8v8, 10v10, 12v12, whatever. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to play and see who's the best. Yo, Roy is impressive, too. For the time he put in, Roy was pretty good, too. Yeah, Justin hasn't played. I mean, he's only played probably a fifth of what I've played, and he's, he's pretty dang good. So he's not on my level yet, but he's pretty good. That yeah. goes without saying. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go to a commercial break. When we come back, we are going to do a rundown of the top free agents on the circuit.
Welcome back. Uh, DMAC has decided to drop his computer and shatter it over the floor, so he's not going to be in the Skype call with us. I made that part up. but uh, So nonetheless, it is just uh, us three. No, I'm back, motherfucker. <laughs> what, the f what did you do? Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Something happened. Where did Hold you on. go okay, in a matter of five on, minutes, and now you're like in a forest running away know, with your computer? Listen. Okay, I understand all this technical difficulty bullshit. Okay, listen. What we do have to talk about right now is a walk through the dungeon. This is kind of scary, right? Like, what? Yeah, like I'm expecting to be and or... Blair Witch DMAC once again. Hold yeah, on, hold on. does this shit, man? Three, two, one, though, motherfucker. Bow. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right. Listen, as we get into this, I, 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 I wanted to bring this topic in, and now I'm pissed that my internet cut out or whatever. But... <laughs> There's a lot of free agents in this shit right now, and, and, and a lot of them aren't, aren't just the ones on the list, okay? So, Scotty, start off with the list, but, but a lot of them are off the list. All right, so whatever he said that was extremely confusing, that. Um, so we're going to run down the list. Every one of us will have 30 seconds. I will be cheating and giving myself extra time in case I can't make the point, or I will be cutting it short. So without that, with that said... Best man, you are first. Thoughts on Blaze? Ah, Blaze. Uh, no bloom, no sprint. He will still be a very good player. Obviously, he's really good with armor abilities. So if Jetpack is still in, which I think it will be, he will definitely be using that to his advantage. Um, depending on what team he gets on, status quo or whatever it may be, he'll still be at the top one way or another. All right, D. You had 10 seconds. I, 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 don't, I don't understand uh, why Blaze is still trying to compete. Uh, last year, he said he didn't want to compete, and now all of a sudden, he has a bug. I, I don't know if a top team is going to pick him up because he, he lacks full dedication. Uh, I think it would be a questionable move if somebody like Status Quo picked him up because he always says he wants to quit. That's my uh, full take on it. Jason? Yeah, Blaze is, Blaze is a great player. We, I mean... We really saw his potential at Raleigh when they <laughs> beat us in the finals in 10 games. He went over plus 100 that event and, uh, you know, played, you know, an insane amount of Halo and just played great. So, you know, if he can play like that consistently throughout a whole season, uh, you know, the sky's the limit for the kid. And he's, you know, he's a great player. So uh, I see him being on a good team. I don't know if a team like Status Quo would pick him up uh, as their first choice. Just because he's newer to the league, and you know, I think they might God. go for a veteran player first. But uh, he's definitely a great player, and I see him being around for a while. All right, well, a little bit over, but I will accept it. I, my big thing is the dedication uh, for me. I, I think the fact of the matter is, is we saw him at Raleigh perform very well. Since then, we were always like, "Oh, is Blaze going to come back?" That was like the only story we had. We we're like, "Will Blaze return to being Blaze-like?" Raleigh Blaze. Raleigh Blaze, but it, it didn't happen. So if, maybe if he gets his dedication back up, I could perhaps see it. But as of now, I think he's just going to be kind of floating around and waiting for a last-minute team. Time. Indeed. APG. Uh, APG, obviously, um, to add on to the, the, uh, Blaze Raleigh, he was one of the people that was destroying against you guys in the finals, even more so than Blaze was. Um, obviously... He was one of the top players at the end of H3, and then going into Reach, he adapted pretty well. So I think he will continue his success on to No Bloom, No Sprint in 2012. D-Man, um, I gave up on the watch. APG was one of my favorite players in Halo 3. Halo Reach, he's still getting it done. Still super dominant. Uh, I think he's even more of a mature kid now. He is somebody that has proved dedication to me. Uh, I'd pick him up. For sure, in an instant, I think a top team should definitely pick him up. Maybe a team like Final Boss should kind of uh, figure out a situation where they could pick a player like APG up because he's a beast and he's going to continue to be a beast in 2012. Lunch. Yeah, I think Bradley's had a top top 10, maybe top 5 shot the last two years probably. Halo 3, towards the end of Halo 3 and, and Halo Reach, he's had a, a definitely a top 10, top 5 shot. Uh, and he's gotten he's gotten a lot more mature through the last year or two, um, which really helps him a lot because uh, I, you know a couple of years ago he was getting technicals and losing stipends, and nowadays he won't say he won't talk any crap, and and I think that's a good thing. You know he's focuses more on his game, and 
you know, he's a great player. I think he should definitely be picked up by a top team. You know, he adds a great dynamic to any team. I think just because he's focusing on his gameplay doesn't mean he has to lose the whole ability to trash or to talk trash. Me personally. Well, if you're losing your stipend, you're going overboard, though. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll yeah. agree to disagree. Uh, he's been a top ten player, and I think he's just going to be one of those people who are just a staple in the league consistently from here on out. He's just a natural gamer. I, the, I look at APG, and I never see him placing outside of the top eight if he actually tries. And that's a fact. Yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Noob, uh, he's he's my one person. I obviously you could say the world about him last year, but uh, I think a lot of that. I'm not saying a lot of it has to do with the bloom and sprint, but he used it to his advantage. So I mean, if he can use no bloom, no sprint to his advantage, he he was one of those players even towards end of Halo Three that went under the radar with a lot of the nerdy stuff he did. So I mean, he he's just that annoying type of player, and if he can somehow bring that into these new settings, I think he will be the same player as as we've seen the past year. Uh, yeah, I, I thought he was, uh, it was the craziest drop of 2011 when Ryan Noob got dropped off of straight rip, and that, I thought that was the dumbest decision by any team last year. So, of course, when, when a player uh, like that comes back and leads a team to a first-place finish, that's awesome. I, I think a veteran team needs to pick him up. In fact, I think this would be a, a, a good place uh, for Quo to go to. I, I think Ryan Noob is one of those players. He does need to mature a little bit. I, I, in fact, I heard he played some 1v1 tournament the other day, and he ended up booting the kid that he ended up beating. Uh, those are, are not the <laughs> type of things, or he ended up losing to in the finals. And those are not the type of things that we want our top, top players, uh, how we want them representing the game. So, so he needs to grow up a little bit, but has all the skills, all talents, will be on a top team. Lunch. Yeah, that's a you know he's he's a very uh, unique player. I feel like he definitely needs to mature a lot. He he gets on my nerves when he you know just posts whatever he wants and you know doesn't really give a shit about the repercussions and uh, you know he, he he lost a lot of respect for me between multiple posts. But he's a great player. I won't take anything away from him in terms of end game. You know he's he is definitely a very annoying player to play against. He gets him behind you and he used the armor abilities. You know he's definitely a top three armor armor ability user, and uh, he you know he's a great player. So I feel like he would definitely add uh, a great dynamic to pretty much any team that he could get on, and uh, you know help him out. Nerdy player, man. Very nerdy. I, you know, Rainu, this is the one where it's really just it isn't settled with me. I look at it and I think, you know, countdown CTF. He did the exact same strategy for four events in the row. In the first six seconds, he'd sprint and get the flag cap. I, I think he's just a player that if once people start actually caring about the game plan watching VOD, they can shut him down extremely, extremely easily. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to adjust. I mean, he, he puts a lot of effort in, and I see him having maybe potential, but just I don't see him being where he was this season, next season, if there is a next season. Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. All right, lethal. That's to you, best man. Uh, the I know you're sitting there <laughs> chatting. You, know, you got like a Twitter message, and you're like, "Oh yeah, not someone's no watching me. I'm gonna do uh, it." Uh, Twitter is shut down. Uh, uh, it's not working. Uh, uh, what uh, can uh, I do without Twitter? I know, man. Follow me at MLG Best Man. Anyways, Lethal. <laughs> um, Lethal's another type of player. I mean, I don't really know too much about him. Besides, his snipe is amazing, and he had a little trouble in the beginning of the year when he switched to StarCraft a little bit and stopped caring. They had the two top 12 placings, and he finally got on, made that infamous squad and got the top two in the in the event wins. So, I mean, as long as he's, uh, you know, playing a lot, he, he'll, he'll be, of course, to be reckoned with. But, I mean, he, that's, <coughs> so, I mean, eh, that, he's a stat kind of guy. Dave? Um. He dominated one part of the tournament one time. Uh, uh, Lethal dominated the finals once when they won, uh, and I thought that was kind of going to be his like coming out party. But but he kind of went dormant since, uh, and I don't know if uh, we're going to be able to continue to uh, see a, a team with Lethal and, and Ryan Noob and that type of talent. So I don't know if he's going to be surrounded with that type of talent. So he might need to join another team. And if he's able to do that, I think he'll be a pretty good fourth. Yeah, I could definitely see him on a top three team and not be surprised. 
However, I, I, I just don't see it happening. I, I don't know why. I, I think we saw a little bit of dominance out of them this year, and I don't know if we're going to be seeing too much more. Much? I think one thing that, that kind of caught me off guard with that whole infamous squad, actually, uh, you know, Lethal MVG, Ryan, all those guys, is I, I, I went back recently and watched one of your behind the crosshairs with uh, Lethal oh. at, before Nationals, and he That's was talking about. He was he was talking about how like they they didn't think they could win really like you know they were talking about how they thought Dynasty was just going to take it easily and as a team that won the event right you know right before the event Dynasty won like you know I I don't know how you could possibly have that mindset and and that's one thing that you know really they all need to, to mature a little bit in that sense that you know you have to go into every tournament thinking you can win especially if you've won one with the same roster that year. Granted, you know? they, they still got second even though he said that stuff. Yeah, yeah. They got, got second well. out of it. So I don't know. Like the the thing is, is they they let their arguing, you know, get in between everything, and you know, you can't do that. Like they 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 literally lost it for themselves and didn't get beat by the teams. Really, they were not a top twelve team. Baby but, mama drama. I, I have nothing to really say. That, that whole team is just so surprising that they got top twelve. It's such a big, big disappointment uh, to everybody involved with the whole infamous squad. I, I know they came out with T-shirts, and, and I know they have the, the team dad who, who just kind of helps them through everything. I thought maybe you added a little bit too much pressure on these kids because yeah, uh, right. I, I don't. I don't think I, I don't think they they rose to the I I think everybody put a little bit too much pressure on these kids because they didn't rise to the occasion. In fact, they failed miserably. I they, I, they really I got did. I got something to add on to that failure. Uh, Lethal was talking to a girl that what? may have been talking to APG and may have caused their downfall for wait, that wait. last event. What we got girl in video girl games? Drops? Yep. What the? We've never seen that one before, but uh. Yeah, I, I didn't want to bring it up, but I, I forgot about it. But um, that's what it came down to. You have two teammates, scumbag Steve and one another, over one chip. You always see Clutch talking or tweeting about oh, is that Teddy. The, is that the hashtag? <laughs> yeah, Teddy. Uh, yeah. Hashtag Teddy. Everyone tweet that right now. Oh my God. Just, um, you're, you're putting out high school drama on yeah, that yeah, show. Yeah, but I, I, it, it, that was a, that was on Twitter. That was like a known fact. I forgot to bring it up. All right, all right. All right. Well, guys, this, is <laughs> this is a big one, guys. This next one. Uh, all work. right, so that was the downfall. It wasn't anything else. Lunchbox, are you ready Who's for this player? I don't think uh, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> Nated. <laughs> Nated, oh, go. Off. Uh, Nated, obviously, do not agree with this team decision at all. Uh, I think about 90% of the community and about 100% of the pros don't, but... uh. I, it's just really, he's done stuff like this in the past. Um, obviously, when he is on, he is one of the best players in Halo. It, as an individual player, may, maybe not so much as a teammate, but individually, he can easily be the best player. So, we'll see how it goes. I mean, he'll probably just, uh, depending on what team he gets, if it's three amateurs, then, you know, where, where the hell, we're not going to end up in the top 16, top 8, whatever he wants. Um, Nated has always been one of those range players to me, right? Um, in Halo 3, he was kind of that, that range player at one, one point. You could have seen him anywhere from 2nd to 16th. It wouldn't surprise you. Um, and, and that's great. You know, a great player. He, he just like, uh, he's nutty, and, and he really uh, has a great sniper. He kills a lot of people. But 2nd to 16th was his range. You know, you really didn't see him play first too much. He's and, never and I think in Reach, <laughs> he's kind of taken a step back. And I think you can see him anywhere from 8th to 32nd. And I think that's just the type of player he's going to be in Halo Reach moving forward. I think he's going to be, if he's not on a great team, which uh, the type of situation he's involved in now, I don't see him putting a great team around him. I think we see him anywhere between 8th, uh, which is a stretch, and 32nd, which is also a stretch. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean... The, the thing I don't understand about the decision is that he, he, they, he's done it once before with Karma, and he he had another pro on his team at that point. So he's picking up three AM players, or not even, or we don't know if it's AM players. He's picking up three players who well, we know nothing about, and 
Yeah, he's teaming with Boston Nasty, which I won't even comment on that. But it, it's, I mean, it's, I, I just don't know where it came from. You know, like he's he was on a pretty successful team throughout the whole year, or it's not like a complete failure. You know, they played top eight a couple of times, they played second with straight. So you know, obviously he has a t- like potential in this game, and I just feel like he's throwing it away with this decision. I don't know. I don't. I, I like I like Nate. I, you know, Brett's a good guy, but this I don't know. I don't know why you would ever. Mm. Make yeah. this decision when you, you when you have other opportunities that are definitely better. And yeah. no, no bloom and no spring could really you know unleash his potential as well from what it was Agreed. last year. So he's just throwing it away. My uh, thing is, is Nate it was it, it, it's just the worst situation possible to get involved with best na- false nasty if oh. you are Nate. That's just me personally because I see like it's almost like a plan to just ruin Nated's career. Like Ball Snacks, I picture him at home like twiddling his fingers, like evilly laughing, being like, <laughs> "Yes, it's the end of Nated." But <laughs> really, if you're Nated, you got to get the fuck out of there because you should be playing with good people. Just me well, personally. Yeah, if I remember right, whenever he did his last golden ticket, it took him a couple of events to recover from that and like get on a good team. I don't, th- I don't think. He got on a good team right after he did that. Um, so. Wait, did he, I think he got on that carbon team right after, right? Did he? I, I could be wrong. Yeah, but yeah, they, I, I, I know. He, I know. Like he had a lot of flack, like th- saying he wasn't very, you know, wasn't where he used to be at that point. And then he obviously showed he was. But yeah. I, I don't know. It, it could definitely really hinder his whatever team he gets on if this doesn't work out. Agreed. Uh, Last person before the commercial break. Uh, actually, now we got time for two. Uh, Walshy. Cool. Oh boy. Uh, well, she obviously, I mean, the past year or even the past two years has been really a uh, rough time for him. I think two top eight finishes and uh, like eight events. So, I mean, looking forward, I don't know how much drive or care he has anymore. Um, I don't, can't, I'm just saying that as an opinion. I don't know for sure, but I can't really see him being picked up on a top team. Uh, he, he didn't even get on a top team last year. Uh, and, you know, he, he settled for uh, Ninja and Mick win and kind of, you know, rode that out. We got that one top eight and then, you know, kind of just, just fell back to top 12. So depending on his uh, his drive, uh, I'll see him floating around the same place as this year. Yeah, I think while she's done, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't see him coming back in 2012. Uh, he just had... A steady decline, and it sucks because uh, I've actually gotten to know Dave uh, recently and over the past two years, and he's an awesome guy. And I really uh, do do think that he is an awesome gamer, but I just think he, he's a little over the hump at this point, and he's just not the player that he used to be. So, uh, yeah, I, I think Walshy is, is done in 2012. In fact, I'll be surprised if I see him playing Reach but I could be wrong. This uh, no blue, no sprint thing could definitely help him out, and he could be a totally different player. Munch? Yeah, I mean, my my thoughts aren't exactly what Bestman said. I, I you know, if he if he plays, then I think he can be good. But it's the problem is, is I don't feel like he he put in the time that he did, like when he was on, you know, when we team with him, or you know, when he was on FB, or you know, even Carbon. But I I just feel like Dave needs to play. I don't think he's. You know, it's been a while since I've seen him just kind of searching matchmaking by himself or, you know, without his actual team scrimming. So, uh, you know, I, I just think that he, if, if he wants to, you know, it's, it all comes out if he wants to or not. If he wants to play, then, he, you know, I think he just needs to put in, you know, the extra hours and, and play. You know, he knows how to win, obviously, so. I agree with that. Hey, puppy, how you doing? Um, I agree. I think Walsh really just needs to get dedicated, and until he does that, we're not going to, I don't even think his name should be uttered in the MLG scene, because, all, I mean, he has all this hype, and he, he's such, you know, he's a fan favorite for almost no reason, because he's not putting in any effort at all. So with that said, I, I think Walsh either steps up his game or his name drops off, for me personally. All right. Uh, last person before the commercial break, uh, Ghost Ayami. Uh, best man, you can start this off. Yeah, Ghost Ayami's in the same position as Walsh was, even worse, I think. Um, start, starting with the beginning of 2010 season with the Classic, he got a second place, and then a seventh, and then he hasn't been in the top eight since. So, uh, obviously, he was one of the best Halo 2 players. Um, 
I don't see his drive in Halo Reach anymore. I know he went to Gal or Gears of War 3, but I heard some they might even not be a team anymore either. So I I don't know. I'm not too sure where he's going at this point. Um, if he does play, I'm sure if he really did put in the time, he could be uh you know back in the top eight somewhere. But I'm just not too sure. If he um, wants to do that or not. Uh, another player who has a ton of potential, you, you know, when he came to my crib in the very beginning, he came to uh, my house for a LAN, and, and he brought two bags of potato chips, four TVs, and two Xboxes, and he's a, he's a champ. You know what I'm saying? He was a champ then. He was a champ on a 2007 national championship team. Like, he is a, a, a great player, but I think he is way over his hump. Right now, he's splitting down two games. When he was dedicated just to one game, he couldn't get it done recently. So so I, I, I don't know if he's going to be able to get it done in either one. I, I don't think they were that good in Gears of War. Scott, I'm sure you'll touch on that. And, and I can tell you they weren't that good at Halo Reach this year. So I, I don't see it being good. But, but I'm glad he's still around the community, and, and it's always good to see him. Yeah, I think, uh, I think again, it comes down with I don't think – Eric's really put in as much time as he did back when he, you know, was winning and placing, you know, top eight every single event. But uh, I also don't feel like he's really been on a team he's been comfortable with in a, in a while. So I, I think that has something to do with it. I, I mean, if, if, if I were in his shoes and I didn't have a team I was comfortable with, I definitely would be extremely driven to play, you know, by myself or, you know, on my own. So I think that, you know, if he can find a team that he's comfortable with and, and thanks he can succeed with, I think that that would also help him a lot, and, uh, you know, he could get back where he wants to be. It's just a humongous question mark just posted right on his face for me. I I'm not sure. I mean, if there's a pro player who can juggle two games, it's probably going to be, you know, either Ogres, Ghost, T-Squared, or Roy Walsh. Box, you know? Yeah, Walsh. But I, the, you have to put significant amount of time in, and by that I mean... If let's just say the average person is playing four hours of Gears of War and or four hours of Halo, he's looking at eight-hour days in both of those games. And I don't know if he has the dedication to do that. And yeah. plus, with Gears of War said, most of those guys are playing eight hours a day with their teams that are already set. So he's way behind, or even in just chemistry alone. So with that said, I, it's really just... Uh, he, if, if, I, if it was me, if I was going to say Yami, I would say, okay, I'm done trying to juggle two games because I'm mediocre at both of them right now. I would rather be good at something than average as fuck at two things. It's just me. Yep. All right. Well, with that said, and the awkward silence has commenced, uh, we are going to go to a commercial break. When we come back, we will finish the rest of these guys, so stay tuned. Hashtag Teddy. <laughs>
McDaniel, but we need him. I don't know who that is. Oh, welcome back, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. I did not get the word to count me in, so uh, with that said, hi. Uh, we are still doing our player breakdown. Uh, D-Mac, you wanted to say something? You, you had your hand up like you were going to say, like, yeah, <laughs> or like, give me daps. So. No, nah, it, it was a total, total confusion right there. Just total confusion. Okay, sweet. Good. All right. This is kind of awkward for me right now. Um, so, back to the discussion here. Uh, the next player up on the list is Twilight. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I always got to go first. All right. Um, Twilight, obviously, one of those players that really went under the radar, didn't get a lot of credit, and um, kind of got shafted with the teams at the end of last year. But he always somehow find, found a team or made a team and got top six or top four. So... I mean, if he really wants to, to play next year and, you know, find another one of those random group of players, like, he's literally taken random, like, assortment of players and gotten top four, at least. He even beat Instinct. What, what random assortment are you talking about? Fat Main, Ryan Noob, Goofy, <laughs> like, what the fuck are you, what do you mean? <laughs> like, the most random players that weren't in the top eight. It, then he made Crimzix, Twin Savior, Dursky. After Crimzix and Twin Saviors weren't in the top eight, they got top four at Columbus uh, this past year. And then, and then he made the Dursky, you know, all these random teams. He just gets top four when he has a good team and, you know, uh, put, uh, puts in practice. with the, uh, any, t- any type of players he has, he puts in the practice, they'll get top four. That's the way I've seen it. D? I've seen it a different way. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know. Personally, uh, when I look at it, he is a uh, uh, one he has a good squad around him. He could definitely get top eight. Um, and, and that's something that he's proven over time. And, and that's something that he struggled for for years. Uh, he's always struggled against the top, top teams. In, in fact, in the top four, if I saw him, I, I would be very scared for the team that he was on because I don't think that he could hold his own against the very top teams. That, that's my personal opinion. And I, honestly, I, I think I'm right on this one. Uh, Twilight, great player. He got it done uh, for a long time, and he's been a pro for sure. But has he ever really placed top three? Uh, I don't. I don't think he has. I, I really don't. And he's had some very good teams around him. He's been to some lands, and he's really dedicated himself to this game. So I, I don't see Twilight as a player uh, that gets picked up by a top team. Uh, I think he lands on a better team than Walshy and Gostiami, but he's going to struggle to make the top eight. Uh, but he might he might hit it a couple of times next year if he plays. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know much at all about Twilight to be honest. I I've never really played much with him or played against him much. But uh, you know he's been in the you know he's been in the top four I think a couple a couple of times and uh, you know he's 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 found a way to win with the, with new new players or players that haven't been around much and. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know much about him. I think that you know, if he puts in the time and he finds you know a good team that he's comfortable with, and you know, kind of like the other players we talked about, I think he can you know he can be in you know top top eight, top four. But uh, you know, I think you know, reach with all these players that are playing so much and uh, all the newcomers. You know, you gotta you gotta put in the time, and uh, you know, again, I don't really know if he has. I don't I don't play with him much or anything like that. So uh, you know, he's kind of a question mark to me. Well, I, I'm going to have to say that uh, talking to I, I split a cab with him and Gosayami to our Orlando event. And, you know, basically he was just like, I don't know how things have changed so much. Because, I mean, he's been around for a very long time. And he's just not really happy with how, like, the pros are or all these new faces. He he's, has an inability to adapt. So, with that said, I don't think he's really going to put too much effort in. He may float around, maybe probably throw a team together with, like, Captain Anarchy, Ghost Ayami, and Thuggish again. Uh, that's pretty much like his ideal team in my he, eyes, right? He now. went. He went from top sixteen at Raleigh with Legend Pimps, Ryan Oob, and uh, some other random player, and and then went to DC with Ryan Oob, Batman, and Goofy, and got fourth place. Went from sixteen to fourth yeah. with Batman. Like this is random, like sort of team. That's where I was trying to. Yeah, he had legend pimps, and then he got, he got rid of him and got goofy. That that's an improvement, Nick. No, of he got he Batman said. as well, and Batman didn't. Even, I don't even think Batman, Batman played it, Raleigh. Batman's better than legend pimps too. Yeah, what? <laughs> and then, Come on. all right. So then he goes. Hey, are pimps, you so, kidding me? You want to compare placements at, between at, legend at, pimps and or pimps? I legend don't, pimps at and Halo Reach. 
Batman's probably touched Tuskegee this was in Halo three, three times with fingertips. Oh, yes. Moving on to Halo Reach, he, he teamed with Twin Saber and Crimson. Crimson was his, in his second event, and they got fourth place. Why and are you up placements from Halo three? That was this is Reach. I'm just saying every every team he's been on, he's gotten fourth with. Well, and he's always you put him on the hot seat, and then he got fourth. <laughs> and then he got dropped on his team the next event. Yeah, then that team floated around the top 12. Yeah. He so might have. All right, children. What does floating around right. the top 12 mean? It's a bad. Not a good placing. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Hey. Hey. I know. Nick, just fucking, you know, spray it off. Eyes. Thank you. I like oh. you. Uh, <laughs> T squared. Ah, T squared is uh, definitely one of those players that uh, if he has that fire under him, I mean he got second this past year. You know, obviously, he made a pretty dumb team change that included one of my teammates right now. But uh, you know he's always he always tries he always somehow finds his way back into the top, sort of in a, in a, in a sense I guess because he's all I mean he's had like two or three different like major drops in each game and then found his way back up for like you know a little bit. But it seems to be like a recurring theme. So, I mean, if he can get back uh, on a good team, I'm hearing rumors of him teaming with Ninja and Mikwin. So, I, I mean, Stupid. yeah, I mean, yeah. This is Tom Taylor we're talking about, right? Yep. All right. No, the other T squared. No, I didn't hear the name, Jackass. All right. Um, yeah, I think uh, T squared is actually going to make a comeback in 2012. I, I, I don't know why, but I think no bloom, no sprint is going to benefit him. Uh, he's one of those players to me that still has uh, something that would definitely attract me to teaming with him. You know, he, he's a he's a big name within the game. If I was an up and coming player who was really good, like say a formal, right, I, I wouldn't mind teaming with a T squared. Uh, uh, that being said, th the reason is is because I think T squared will actually put in the work as well. Uh, I, I don't know if he's been the best teammate in the past, but uh, T squared is is somebody that is definitely going to make a comeback out of all our big MLG Halo stars uh, that are left. I think T two is, is still the most prominent face. <laughs> Bias. <laughs> <laughs> completely, completely. Uh, lunchbox on to you. Yeah, hey, I, if he teams with Ninja, hey, hey, it is not the first <laughs> feedback. It is Fuck not the first <laughs> of the council. Yeah, I, I mean, we teamed with him the first event, and obviously it didn't work out too, too well. We we ended up uh, going with uh, Pistol and Ogre 2 the next event. But, uh, you know, I feel like if he puts in the time and, and gets a squad he's comfortable with, I don't feel like he was very comfortable on our team, honestly. Uh, you know, we had some personality conflicts just because uh, he, he's used to being, he used to, used to running the show on his team. And, and you know, I, I kind of, I didn't want him to just join our team and take over and, uh, you know, you know try and, uh, dictate how he played, so I, I feel like he really didn't, you know, I, I don't know, I feel like that Tom is used to being the leader and being the person that uh, kind of calls the shot, so if he can yeah. get on a team that he can do that, which, uh, you know, I feel like was the case on, on straight rip in the next event, and they got second, uh, obviously he made that team change, but uh, you know, if he can get on a team that he can, you know, dictate and call the shots and, and feel and, and feel like the leader and stuff like that, I, I think that he can do well. Uh... Oh, bias. Well. Yeah, he's biased, yeah. right? Uh, you, you want to hear a biased answer? I'm about to give you the most biased answer of my entire life. All right, this is my thing with T squared. Every year, there's no question that he's not going to float around in the top eight, top four, even, you know, top two guaranteed. He's always going to have one. The problem is, is T squared gets these, he's great in like the first year of the game. And then what happens is, is he hits this wall and he just can't get past it to save his life. He stays the exact same skill level from that point on. He doesn't get any better. He just gets better teammates as they go on. And that, to me, is just a fact. Yeah, but my argument was is because he's such a big name, he's going to be able to get those teammates, and he's going yes, to have to uh, Yes, Yes and no. So do you think Walshy, with that big name he has, can get teammates? Because Walshy's bigger name than... Walshy Detroit. did have... Uh, yo, he had Mick Wynn on his team. Mick Wynn is actually... Do you really want to get player. into a discussion about Mick Wynn and Ninja in competitive play? Do you want to <laughs> well, do this Ninja, right now? I didn't say Ninja's name. I think Ninja's going to be Nick much better... I, I think Ninja's going to be much better uh, this year coming up than the last year. I, th I, I didn't think he was ready. 
But Mick Wynn was a good 4v4 player. I, I've watched him many a times. So, and I don't think Walsh had the best team, but Walsh had the best team he could have had. He didn't deserve yeah. a good team. Well, and Ninja, and Ninja wasn't a complete flop in tournament. Let's not act like he yeah. just went to no, tournaments no. and was like, you know, like a, a, you know, an OBJ player from like a main player online. He, I mean, he, against BTH, he was playing great. You know, like they lost a pit TS where him and Mickwin were absolutely destroying. Uh, and and he was much more know, you know, like, yeah, yeah, he's. He, I don't know. That's. I mean, that turning point team. I feel like I don't feel like they were super confident and. Uh, you know, they kept it together, you know, through three or four events, but, uh, you know, Ninja and Mikko were both solid players, solid tournaments. He wasn't, he, I'm not saying he is what he is that lands in tournaments yet, but uh, eventually he will get there. For, uh, you know, I don't, he's, he's a good player. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Scott, I think we should talk about Ninja next. Uh, to, to touch on T2, he could obviously play well if he really uh, puts in the effort. It, it, his dedication in the past, uh, whether whatever year it may be, whatever event he's put in the most time, he plays pretty well. So definitely see him back on top. All right, last player in that, or actually no, yeah, uh, I can't decide. Uh, well, let's do Ninja then. Do you want to go ahead and if you want to talk about Ninja, I will. I will start off with Ninja because I didn't, because I want to, and I can control that. Um, so okay. here's my thing with Ninja. All right. Fan favorite for wearing funny hats and being good online? Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> I just don't know if he ever has what it takes to actually compete at a tournament. He's gotten, what, two top eight finishes? Right. This two top seven. eight finishes, and he has this many followers, he has this many fans because he's a likable dude. People put him on a pedestal because he is a household name, because he wears cow hats and stuff. Oh, well, he created a personality for himself. He, no, he did, and that's not taking anything away. But if you want to talk about someone on a competitive level, Ninja is not there. You have to at least place in the top four before your name can even be thrown into that category of players. And that's just my opinion. Um, here's my thing about Ninja. And my, my thing about Ninja is a little nicer than your thing about Ninja. All right. I, I think that... He is uh, one of the players with uh, the most potential uh, out of uh, everybody here that's still playing and still competing. I think Ninja has an incredible, incredible amount of potential. Uh, he's not a good 4v4 player yet, but uh, he's okay. And he just has all the skill, all the talent. And we know that he can get it done. And I think over the year... He's had this willingness to learn uh, more so than he did at the beginning of the year. He was more stubborn, and, and he's finally getting more mature. He's growing as a kid, and, and I think uh, it, with his business sense and with uh, his ability to make plays, Ninja is not only going to land on a top team next year, he's going to be one of the focal points on that top team. I, I think Ninja, uh, the sky's the limit for the kid. Uh, he really can get it done. He hasn't gotten it done yet, and he's not good at 4v4 yet, but he will be. I mean, I, I, go ahead, Lunch. I, I think it's way too early to even, and, and you know, talk about what kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, what, what kind of a player he is in terms of 4v4, because, you know, he was on the turning point team that practiced, like, you know, three times before Nationals. Like, and I mean, that, I don't know, he was on a team that, in my eyes, wasn't, like, a super serious competitive team that actually thought that they could win. Like, I, I don't feel like throughout that whole season, you know, they really, you know, thought in their heads that yeah. they could win. I, I feel like him and Micklin as, a, as a, you know, a duo could be a very dangerous team with, you know, I don't know, <coughs> a, a team that, uh, you know, puts in a, a, the same amount of time that they just did. It definitely, I feel like, would be a, a hard teammate to team with. And just because he's, you know, he's very... Uh, oh. I don't know. He's 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 a great player. So you know, he's he's someone that could definitely be on a, a very a very good team. Uh -huh. Him and Micklin. Uh, there's there's no doubting Ninja's dedication, and he has been on teams that haven't been put into practice. Uh, well, she went to Korea before the national championships, and was on a Halo, you know, tournament tour. So it. Ninja's dedication isn't the question. It's whether or not he wants to adapt to this 4v4 game. He has sky to the limit skill. 
There's no doubt in that. But he, but he seems to have these 1v1 tendencies in 4v4 play. Um, what, when it came to objective, when I was on the team, him and Mickwin are just kind of like overslaying, which isn't a bad thing. Overslaying is good if you capitalize on it correctly, which we see Instinct do. Um, you guys did it so well where you guys would never make dumb pushes. You guys would always make the, let the other team make the mistake and capitalize on that. And you guys would overslay even at some point. But there is just times where Ninja doesn't do the objective the correct way. And, and same with Mickwin. But they're both great players. I think Mickwin's better than Ninja. So Same. Uh, yeah, me too. I've always said that. Yeah, I so. think yeah, I think Mickwin's better in the overall picture. Um, I, you know, I think if Ninja's playing his best, I think he's better individually. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Mickwin overall and more and more consistently, Mickwin I think is as you know, you know a better player. But they, I, they I think they're very together. close. Yeah, I think they definitely sure. stick together. They have a, a ton of chemistry and they they get along great. Uh, and you know, even even like a couple times I've watched like their stream where they're practicing, they'll get into like these arguments and even heated arguments, but. You know they're fine a couple hours in the next day because you know they're 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 friends and you know they are not you know really mature about it which is a good thing. Yeah, uh, I th I think um, speaking of, uh, when you speak of Ninja, you just speak about Mickwin. So I I think we touched on Mickwin here, but but just to touch on him a little more, dude has a lot of potential when it comes to playing incredibly smart. I, I think he makes a lot of smart plays in games and, and sometimes he could really play a whole game. One, one time I was watching him, I said, man, this this dude is uh, Walshy playing like the Walshy of old, man. He, he's really playing smart right now and it ended up being Mickwin. And, and Mickwin is just one of those players that really could play like a veteran sometimes and, and I want to see a little more out of that. Uh, I, I want to see a little more of that out of him in 2012 for sure. That's that's my main thing with Mickwin is, is he's very smart, but just like as Nick said, I mean he gets both of them get into this free for all kind of mentality where they just get frivolous kills and they don't focus on the objective. I think as time grows, Mickwin and Ninja will be thrown into that best duo category, assuming we even have pro player awards anymore. Do we do we do those? Yeah, we got we got them out. Okay, yeah. Well, they would probably be be in there. That's what I'm saying. They yeah. have potential, but they have to grow. I think, you know, they, yeah, should, I think especially Ninja could definitely focus on not challenging as much. I think, like, you know, when he has Sniper, he goes for the no-scope every single time. And, you know, especially against us, you know, when he plays against us, it's literally, I mean, I, I think at one point, I think one game we made him go, like, negative, really double 20, digits. I was, I was yeah, you guys are like, the like, best. And, that, well, and that's, like, the only time I've ever seen him go, like, negative double digits, even, at least in a land. So, I, I mean, and, that, and that's because... You know, he gets punished very hard for challenging us because normally he doesn't have just one person shooting at him. You know, if he has a sniper, we're obviously gunning for him. And that punishes the, the rest of the team. Exactly, exactly. And that's why he, he that, that's one thing that he can focus on. But at the same time, he's incredibly skilled individually. So, you know, if he can work on these minor things, like, you know, he has br a very bright future. And he's dedicated as hell. You won't find anyone more dedicated. So That's for sure. All right, well, we are going to go to a commercial break. When we come back... I'm not sure what we're going to talk about. We have to discuss that, so stay tuned. We got to talk about neighbor. <laughs> Exciting we'll things. All right, real quick. I, I have to talk. I I need a. How long are these commercials? Because I totally got to piss and get a drink of water. Go piss.
All right, just keep running them. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Hammer? Hammer. Oh boy. All we're right, back. and we're back. As I was picking my nose over here, <laughs> I'm like clearly, I'm like going in. I'm going. Oh man, I'm watching the rebroadcast. <laughs> Damn. All um, right. we'll, we're, we'll, what we're gonna do here is, well, we're gonna run a little bit late. Um, since we're not gonna do a show on Sunday because it is Christmas and some of us might have lives, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna run about 15, 20 minutes longer, and we're gonna still talk about some players once Scott gets back. But uh. Yeah, I don't know what to do in this awkward moment of. Uh... Um, no, I, I I do. Hold on, over here. No, what we're gonna do is actually uh we have to talk about neighbor. Uh, where neighbor is gonna end up? Uh, I think it, it's a big deal. Everybody wants to know uh what type of player he's gonna be next season. Um, me personally, I I think. Neighbor is one of those players. He was my favorite player in Halo Three. I love. I love watching him in Halo 3. I thought he was so talented. Like, and I think he had a lot of fans just like that in Halo 3. I don't think some of the top teams enjoyed playing with him too much because uh, he, he didn't really end up getting those first first play uh, first place placements. But Neighbor didn't really transfer all that well to Reach. There are players who are a little more flashy, hence why I think Ninja blew up in Reach. Uh, you know that that. 1v1 player, that dominant uh, type of just individual player, I, I don't think that's definitely Neighbor in Halo Reach. I, I think Neighbor is one of those players, and I think he's going to continue to be one of those very good players, but I, I don't see him as being that dude. Um, so so Neighbor lost a little bit of, of that spice to him, and, and I don't know if he's going to continue to be that dominant. I don't know who started off the show, so I don't know I, who to throw this to. Uh, D-Mac did. Um, okay. uh, fuck, I don't know how I'm supposed to talk. You guys talk about him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I teamed with him for a whole season, so um, I've had a lot of experience with Neighbor. I, I feel like Neighbor has grown a lot from when I teamed with him. When, when we teamed, he was, uh, <laughs> he was <laughs> kind of, kind of the old Neighbor. He was, he was very. I don't know. He, he Let's would, hear it. Come on. He would, well, he would, he would just he would make you feel like you weren't good enough a lot of times. And I, I feel like that's something you should never do with with your team. Because even when I was playing, you know, on hit, on, when, you know, we teamed, like, I, I just felt like I wasn't good enough a lot of times. Because he would just, you know, constantly go over theater and talk about, uh, you know, this one time, this one thing happened. And, you know, just very situational stuff. And, you know, mm. just situations that may never not even come up again. Uh, and I, I don't think he does that at all anymore. Uh, you know, he's a lot more positive, and you know, I think having a positive attitude goes a hell of a long way. And it, and he's and he's definitely changed a lot since we teamed with him. And you know, yeah. I commend him for that because it's def it is very hard to change an ad change your attitude, especially yeah. in game when you're, <clears throat> if you're losing or if you're uh, you know have, if you have a bad game, like it's tough as hell. So to touch on that, I did. Before I team with them in 2010, I would always see a uh, neighbor picking, singling. So he'd mm -hmm. always single someone out from a team. It always seemed to be like one person, and it, it seemed to be like a recurring theme throughout uh, 2009, 2010. And it was always lunch. He would always go through theater and look at just one little stupid situation that would happen <laughs> and go in third person and follow you around. And he did it with Walsh, too. So, you know, then once he got on the team with Triggers Down, or, uh, when it was me, Tots, hysteria and neighbor he, he seemed to uh change uh a, a little bit he still he still picked on tots quite a bit but he, he had reason to but uh uh he he changed a lot from when he was teaming with instinct and ever since fear itself put out that post about him i i don't know it, it seemed to change him a little bit but uh i i could see i mean maybe in reach he's still maybe behind the scenes he does do a little, of the, you know, picking someone out, uh, you know, fucking with them and telling them he's like a piece of shit because he went training instead of green. But, uh, I mean, he's a good player, and he was one of the best players in 2010. Regardless, we didn't win. It, his overall game completely changed from when in 09 it does. Absolutely. He became, he became an objective player, and he was still going. But he had most objective time and most uh, most positive in the tournament at uh, Raleigh when we got third. So, yep. 
Yeah, and I don't and I don't want people to think we didn't take anything away from him. He he taught our I mean, he taught us a lot. He was he is one of the smartest players I've ever teamed with. Uh, and he knows what he's talking about. He just goes about he yeah. just he went about it on our team the wrong way. You know, like, my brother almost got into a fight over you know just how I mean Mason just you know would attack you know attack you like almost like yeah, he is he's smart. completely different now. He doesn't know how to word. Uh, exactly, what he yeah, wants exactly. to say. He doesn't know how to fucking say it. Like so, he just <laughs> and there's a lot of times that even, <laughs> even now, like a lot of people don't. Like me and my brother go at it all the time. You know, yeah, like for sure. we just it's, it's every it's almost every Halo player I've ever met that is just very you know that you don't like being told that you're doing something wrong. Well, Mason you know? hates losing too. Exactly. Yeah, he does. I mean, all of us do. So my thing is, is something that no one here has ever even said, which is kind of pissed me off to this point. Um, he doesn't fucking play. Dude doesn't care. He didn't care in 2010. He did. Not really. Come on. Not he only play. cares when he wants to care. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's bad. He came out and he got second place at our opener because he actually tried in the offseason. From there, yes, he had a lot of stuff going on, but it's he's a professional at this game. He should be putting in his time. Yes, he has a lot of stuff going on with Gamma Labs and... Gunner, and I don't know what else he does. But, like, you have to devote some time to gaming. And I know he's looking to change that around. But to me, his dedication is at an all-time low. And if it wasn't for how that one top six finish he had with you, Nick, I think we would be discussing him as one of the players like T-Squared and Walshy who, will they make a return? That's me personally. Yeah, I, mean, that's a fair I, point. I don't. I don't. Are you talking about our triggers down 2010 season? Where you didn't care? Oh, had, the one. The one you just. Had. I meant 2011. All right, all right. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could be thrown in that same thing. I mean, I didn't. I hated. I hated playing Beach last year, and I think a lot of people did. It just wasn't very fun. And if you're well, not winning, you're not gonna want to put in the time. So it kind of just becomes a chain reaction. Like I, I admit that I screwed over a, a bunch of people, Ninja McQuinn, whoever I team with. You know. Which the triggers down in the beginning, uh, Heinz and SK and Hysteria, I screwed a lot of teams over by not putting in the time, and you know I'm willing to change that, and I think he is too. So, yeah, I mean even Mason, for as little as he's played Reach, is, is you know still very good at Reach, and it just and and even you, you know, you guys, both of you guys have not played as much Halo Reach as you did, you know, probably any of the other Halos, and yeah. uh, you know, you guys are still. It, it all started with that, with that certain team change that I didn't do. Yeah. Thing of Reach. Hey. We tried. What was that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to team with uh, Lunch Roy and Tots, and I turned it Stuck down. Stuck with it for the Hot Pockets. And then, Didn't get Hot Pockets. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was rough. Yeah, it was a rough rough time. <laughs> That's what you get for trying to fish for money, man. I am. I can't believe well, you did I, I, really, I told him. I, really, I told him the exact not, thing. You don't. Don't make team decisions based off well, of that. It was, it, it was me, Heinz, Neighbor, and Hysteria. And, yeah, you still had a good team. Yeah, and I uh, didn't. I was still on the fence about Tots, so so I didn't do it really. I think. And I didn't know you guys were turning the robots too. So. All right, two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, two. Uh, two more people. One is, uh, I guess we'll start with him just because we've been discussing it. I, I I've never actually gotten closure on this subject, so I, I kind of want to know. It is what well, what happened with Tots? Why did he piece the fuck out? And will he ever return? That's my question for anyone here who knows anything about it. I I mean I I teamed with him for the first event and that was kind of I mean he teamed with FB after that but I feel like you know Ants didn't didn't really give a hundred percent of his effort when he teamed with us and he played he played a decent amount but I I don't know I think I think if Ants actually if if Halo was his number one goal of, you know, doing it, you know, placing well or winning in a tournament, like, I think Ants could. I, I think he's, he was very, he was, he was very individually skilled in Halo 3, and he just, he, he, he didn't play enough reach to, to, to know Bloom well enough, I don't feel like, and he, he got a lot of slack for, for going negative, but he was, I feel like, especially on your triggers down 2010 team, he was, he was, a, he was very annoying to play against, because he was always in your base, and, uh, yeah. and, and reach, you couldn't really do that. You yeah. couldn't really get into the other team's base and be as big of a nuisance because of sprint. sprint. Yeah, and exactly. and I think that hurt. I, I think that ultimately hurt him. I think with with no sprint and no bloom, ants ants could be a very good reach player. I think I think sprint hurt ants because you know he other te- other players could get get into in behind him 
even though he made a good play to get behind you in the first place, if that makes sense. Like, right. They could just catch up to him. He was always the first one to charge, and whether or not he would put himself in the right position, he would. we would take advantage of it in Halo 3 yeah. um, some way or another. But I think, I, honestly, in my opinion, I don't know how truthful this is, but I think he was in it, started becoming it for the money, and then once he started not placing as well, kind of just lose that drive. He was like, he got dropped for her, what was it, final boss? Anaheim was his last good event, and then he just got on like a completely random team for uh, Raleigh. And then once that hit, he, I don't think he, he wasn't worth it for him anymore. I mean, he had a good a year or two of gaming, so I don't see why he would want to still play if he wasn't having any fun and you know getting tossed around on these bad teams. Like he couldn't even, he couldn't get on a team for Raleigh, so he teamed with uh. Like Batman and you know whoever and I else. Think, yeah, was. and I, I think that was a mistake. Even even going to that event with that team, I, I if I were him, I probably wouldn't even went. I would have yeah. just tried to take an event off and then get on a team the next event after the team changes happened again. Because I, I mean, even I mean, I talked to him the whole time that it was happening. I mean, he definitely was not confident with that team, and and I wouldn't have been either. I don't like he, he didn't really talk to those his teammates that much, and they didn't practice very much at all, and uh, you know that. It is what it is, but I, you know, at that point, I just feel like he was putting time and money into it, and he wasn't getting anything out of it. And yeah. if I were him, I would have, you know, what I would. Let DMX be best man. For sure. I, I feel bad that <laughs> Ants is, is that Ants is gone because he was one of those players that never really got to where he was supposed to go in Halo. He he, he started he started at the end of Halo Three. You kind of saw the type of player he was going to turn out to be. One of those really stable uh, teammate type of players that you just love to watch. Uh, he really was one of those players, despite me absolutely having uh, nothing but love for the kid, I love to watch Tots play Halo 3. And, and I think uh, we lost that in Halo Reach. I, I think Lunchbox told us why. But uh, overall, uh, I'm going to miss the dude. I'm going to miss the family just as much. Um, but it, it sucks that we never got to see him play Halo Reach, and I would, I would be so excited if he made a comeback. And I really think uh, some teams dogged him and should have given him, given him a little more of a chance when he was scrambling for a team in Halo Reach. I concur. Yeah. And shout out to the Pinocchios for everything they've done, and you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna miss them especially a lot. Yeah, yeah. they've done a lot for this league. All, so. all this talk about old triggers down may, may have some. Uh, they have some uh, place in the future. I don't know. I'll leave. And what? Have just you been plotting that for like fucking yeah, like two Just throwing minutes? it out there. I don't know. Okay. I, I will leak it right now. Don't even act like I won't. All right. One more player, and then we got to go to a commercial, and then we got to talk about Christmas stuff. So we, we're trying to wrap this up here. So uh, last player is Elamite. And he, no, no one jump at once. Uh, <laughs> Elamite is another one of those players you throw in the, the talks of, I guess, he Sue and Walshie. He, he was a legendary player. He won six or, I think, second highest events from 2008 till, till now or something like Halo that. Halo 3 U.S. champion. Yeah, so. Oh, well, he <laughs> tied with me in event wins. I do. No, I have. I think I, I he was six, right? From, I was talking about from Halo 3 to now. He has a little. I mean, he's been in it since then. Yeah. So, um. He's tied know. with me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I could have put it in there somewhere, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, you okay. always hate yourself. What, what are we, uh, fuck you. All right. Um, so, oh, don't hate it because you haven't won an event, all right? <laughs> I know, like, we talk about event wins. And like, Donnie always tries to correlate back to the yeah, 20 minute 5K. He does. Start. He always does it. This time, that's all I hear about. Oh, really? That's all I hear respect for being a commentator, but. Uh, <laughs> I got to give respect somewhere, right? Yeah, because you fucking suck at casting, apparently. Cause it's I, I, I suck at everything, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you might definitely. I talked to him actually uh, last week um, he called me up we were talking about something else but he said that you know with no bloom and no sprint he feels a lot more comfortable and uh, as do a lot of players so um, I could definitely see him back in the top six top four depending on you know what team he gets on he obviously had some uh, he had a good team for the first couple of events they're really up and down or the Warriors was up and down the whole year but he, he was on that team from uh, the first two events so and then he kind of just faded away when he joined straight rip and that whole debacle. So depending on what team he gets on, I could definitely see him back in the top six. He he's all he was winning fucking back to back events two year, or a year ago. So there's no doubt that he has the 
uh, the skill to win. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think he's never really gotten the credit he deserved uh, to get in Halo 3. He, he won so many events, and he was one of those legendary-ass players. However, uh, his brother is way better than him at this point. <laughs> Ace is one of those really dominant players in Halo Reach, in my opinion. And if, if Elamite does want to get better, all he has to do is go next door to his brother's fucking room and actually learn how to play the game. Because if he watches his brother, he'll have no problem getting back. And it would be awesome to see Elamite step up. And he has an opportunity right now where he could become that fourth place member of status quo. The fact that he doesn't do it, uh, I don't think we've seen him on Halo Reach too much lately. That means he's still not having that dedication, and I think that's ultimately going to hold him back. Yeah, I think I think especially with the other that the straight ripping team that they put together after uh, the second event really hurt all of them. You know, it didn't it didn't benefit benefit really any of them. So I think once you know once the straight ripping team didn't perform how they wanted to, they all kind of went their separate ways ways and uh. You know, especially Kyle took you know took the, one of the biggest hits from it, and you know got on a team that he definitely was not comfortable with. Uh, you know, players that he I, I'm sure he didn't really know uh, until he started teaming with them. So, it, it, once again, if he if he can get on a, a team he's comfortable with and put in the time, like he's definitely still individually skilled, and uh, you know he's won a lot of events. So, you know he's he's still up there in the running for you know. What, what's funny baseball. is is that we talk about Ace getting him a chance to be on his team when two years ago we were talking about Elamite teaming with Ace and giving him a chance. It's just completely flip-flop. Yeah, yeah obviously, because, <laughs> I mean, it's just a evolution of time, you yeah. know, and Ace is caught up, man, and he's way better now. I, I always really thought is. Ace had a better shot than Kyle, even if, like, oh, nine, and, like, <laughs> what? That's <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to go to a commercial break. When we come back, we will be discussing Christmas. Oh. I do. Whoa, language. I believe we are live. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back. So, uh, we didn't really cover anything in between this commercial break. We didn't decide as to what we were talking about. Uh, so, with that said, I will create the topic. Uh, Nick, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, what do I want? <coughs> what did you ask for? Uh, psh, I didn't ask for anything. 22. I don't really need anything anymore right now. Except my family and good health. Man, Jesus, sweet, awesome. <laughs> no, um, uh, I really don't need anything right now. I'm good. You know, just gonna chill over Christmas, have a good, uh, you know, family dinner. Just me and my parents, I think. So, my parents and I, yes. Okay, D Mac, you don't celebrate Christmas, but what are you going to get uh, in this break? It's all season MLG. All we have is this show. Like, what are you gonna do? Um, uh, yeah, how about, can I speak hypothetically? What I, yeah, would, yeah, what I, I would want for Christmas? I didn't want to get you out of your comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. You know? I didn't want to be like, you know, d -Mac, you don't celebrate this, but hypothetically, if you did. No, now hypothetically, that if I did, um, I would, I would get myself some streaming equipment, which is something that I plan on doing pretty soon, okay? Um, but uh, uh, the one thing uh, of, of a piece of equipment that I would buy... Uh, something that always stays comfortable on your body 
it is obviously a shirt from joybot.com. I, I think that's easy, easy dig, enough. Dig, dig. I think a shirt from joybot.com is, is something uh, I'll definitely be uh, shopping for this Christmas. Lunch? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, don't want to be <laughs> I don't want to be the cliche. I don't really have anything I want, but I don't really have anything I want. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I just got an iPad, actually, after we won Nationals, so that was kind of my one purchase that nice. I'll probably cap it off Owing with. Money. Something. Oh, if we're talking about getting our own present. Uh, yeah, I mean, no. I guess. I, guess. So, I got, I got myself a new graphics card. Computers back. The one thing, it. hey, the one thing I got from for Christmas was getting that Winter Wonderland invite. So I got that. I am. I didn't get one. I'm going to play some Halo <laughs> One on the 26th <laughs> through like the 29th or 30th. So. I, actually, I actually got that invite as well, and I don't know how. It's pretty random. I got a mass, <laughs> I got a mass text from Ogre Two. I thought it was a, a miss. Misclick or something? No, it actually Probably wasn't was. misclick. You're actually not invited. Huh. Sorry. Yo, I mean, no. fucking killer <laughs> red, not you. Um. Oh. All I'm asking for is clothes because I have like seven shirts that I just rotate through. <laughs> and, and I need jeans because I've cut most of them into jorts. So. <laughs> you do have a lot of jorts. I do, don't I? That is, it's like the one thing I have like a plethora of in my house. <laughs> now, what do I want to buy myself? <sighs> God. It's a tough this fight. is where we need sponsors. Good. So I could just be like, you well, know, I'm going to go Scott, out and buy like a 12 I, I, I pack of Dr. Pepper and fucking drink it. Well, you know, screw Dr. Pepper because that's really unhealthy for you. If you want a good <laughs> energy sub supplement, you can use Gamma Lab Speed Yeah. I can get you a free shipment out if you want. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Uh, oh, that was fantastic. Um, oh, uh, with that said, joybot.com, check that out. Uh, to be honest, I don't think, have, has anyone been paying attention to what's, uh, been going out content-wise this week? I'm sure Bravo's done, like, seven videos. Um, uh, Ninja's new channel is up and running. Uh, he had to make a new one. I think that's Ninja's Hyper. I'm sure most of everyone in here is subscribed already. But he, Why do you have to make a new one? Uh, I, something happened with this old one with, uh, some, something with, uh, the ads or whatever he has. I don't know. Something, something with money. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, he he put down a lot of stuff. T squared still uploading stuff. Uh, I'm not because my Vegas doesn't work. I I know Ogre Two streamed a couple times. Uh, lunch. Battlefield. Are you are you gonna start streaming? You're in this fucking gaming room, this beautiful gaming room that you got. <laughs> with yeah, we, we haven't really. streamed the last few nights. So that's because my brother hooked it up to his stream, and he isn't on. So I'll I'll probably okay. I'll either switch it back to my TV or I'll make him stream the next couple or for you know next couple of days before Christmas. So uh, we've been streaming you know normally every night except for the last couple of nights and a few nights here and there. But we try to stream at least four or five times a week. All right, so there we go. I'll I'll be streaming tomorrow thanks to Walter. I'm getting from Astro Gaming sending me out. Stop moving. <laughs> and actually, Detach, Detach has a really sick WoW stream. If you want to go watch that, twitch.tv slash emoji Detach. Hey, the stream can't see me, Scott. You're being a real dick to me tonight. Oh, you know that? <laughs> Detach is streaming oh, really? WoW. I didn't know yeah. that. I'm sorry, yeah. Dick. Uh, I was checking it out. He was he was doing some things on it the other night. Oh, Nick, man. you know what? You know it's like. <laughs> nah, bro. Oh. Come on. Don't, I love don't, you Tats, can't, though. I you love can't Tats. end like, the show on like a bad thing, you know? Like, come on. Yep. And uh, I'll give a shout out to Joybot. I am wearing a Joybot shirt under this. I don't know if you can see it. Show it. Woo! Yeah. Joybot. There we go. All right. Um, I, I like to give a shout out to my parents for having me. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nick. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Game Labs. Made a plug earlier. Um, streaming tomorrow. Thanks to Walter from Astro Gaming. AstroGaming.com. Shout out to Nexi. For the Joy Bot gear, um, a bunch of new pros are streaming as well. So check out the Halo section on Twitch. Shout out to my team, Tally, Tom, Ola. Hashtag Teddy. <laughs> Hashtag Teddy. Um, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Nick Bestman Johnson for being my friend. Uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> thanks for redeeming yourself. Hey, I want <laughs> every, everybody watching to have a safe holiday uh, yeah, with the family. Always. For real. Uh, you know, All right, well, with that much. said, uh, episode, uh, episode five complete? Yep. We'll, yeah. we'll ca catch, real. Uh, catch episode thank, four on thank, YouTube. Thank uh, Lunchbox. Lunchbox, thank you for oh, yes. 
I, thank forgot, you. I just assumed Anytime. you were part of the show. It was so fluid, you know? Um, nice. Well, thank you for joining. We got the better twin, so, like, round of applause for us, you know, right? Yeah, yeah better twin, for sure. All right, well, with that said, with that said, uh, that's going to do it for us. Uh, we will be back next Wednesday. We will not do a show this weekend, uh, so stay tuned and follow us on Twitter.